Chapter 401, The Onset of Howling Night had fallen over the Kochang remains, and the howling seemed even scarier in the twilight sky, as though someone was being dragged into the abyss. Dim light flickered in the night sky, barely visible against the flowing motion of the clouds. In a gloomy environment like this, it would become excruciatingly depressing when all lights were gone. Evan Walsh came to a stop, let's camp in this open area for tonight. I suppose we'd better not advance any further into the darkness. Right, come over, Emily. I need to have a word with you. Then, Evan brought the Mexican girl back to the path they came from. It was relatively safe there, since all the gargoyles along the way had been cleared. Lu Xu had to admit, Evan was definitely somebody, to still have such desires in the current context. Was it really fine to do it here and now? Against a cacophony of mournful baying? Speaking of which, Lu Xu's previous remains experiences reminded him of the potential of an exponential increase in risk factors after nightfall, but Lu Xu chose to hold reservation about his judgment which was based on past incidents. After all, the foolproof method of locating the core region using his senses failed him this time. Who knew what other changes there were that he could expect? One had to be adaptable in order to survive, not to blindly believe in empiricism. Besides Emily, there were three other girls in the 18-people team. Everyone had come to the remains in the hope of securing some cultivation resources, but the dangerous situations therein were totally unexpected. As a result, driven by instinct, the other girls had approached other male practitioners for help. Of course, they were not as direct as Emily, and had retained their morality. Except for Meng Jingchan who decided to remain independent, the other two girls had shown their kindness to another two class Ds separately. Some male metahumans had offered the girls some protection along the way out of chivalry. Afterwards, the latter showed their gratitude in return, which served as a motivation for greater efforts from the men. Basically, that was how all the relations had started. It was human nature to have a sense of reliance and good disposition towards those who could keep you safe when in peril. And it was only natural that the two girls, as classes, to have a need for security here. Nowadays, there existed a remains rush all around the world. People perceived themselves as the lucky one favored by God and plunged into the remains together with their beautiful fantasies. However, reality was cruel. Resting on a rock, Lu Xu sank into deep thought about his future plans. As a Class E slacker, he did not attract much attention from the girls. In fact, his sluggishness had won him a bad reputation in the team. Lu Xu did not think he was at fault thought. What else could he do besides shouting, 666? Then, he saw Meng Jingchan retrieve a small-sized alcohol-fueled stove from her backpack and scurried over to a rock to change into a short-sleeve, t-shirt out of sight. Lu Xu's face twitched in surprise, only girls would remember to pack extra clothes in their limited luggage space. Speaking of which, it appeared unlikely to have natural water there. But all the practitioners seemed to be well prepared. Although Lu Xu's and Lu Xiaoyu's backpacks were much smaller than others, their backpacks only needed to serve to hide their invisible storage equipment. When others took out ship biscuits, bacon and canned food, Lu Xu brought out a pack of chips from his bag. Everyone else was startled. Who would bring a bloody pack of chips into the remains? Did he have any general knowledge of field survival? Lu Xu was shocked as well. Lu Xiaoyu was the one who packed his bag. But when she asked him what to put inside the bag, he answered, anything. Anything indeed. He started to wonder what could possibly be in Lu Xiaoyu's own bag. In the meantime, Lu Xiaoyu was eating chips while walking forward. At her side, Anthony would seal up every crack formed on the stones beside her. If gargoyles could produce distress points, Lu Xu would have been overjoyed by now. Those trapped monsters would be his distress point generator all day. What a pity. After less than ten minutes, Evan Walsh returned with Emily, who was combing her hair with her fingers. Lu Xu was amused by their efficiency. No wonder they dared to do it in the remains, it was because it would not take long anyway. 
The atmosphere in the team had stiffened since their return. It was an open secret that they had sealed a form of contract, which was not easily acceptable for the majority. But Evan Walsh was not ashamed at all. Rather, he cocked his head and eyed the other girls, wondering if it was possible to extend his tentacles to them. Simply put, Evan Walsh's ego was already inflated like a balloon. Everyone, do not let your guard down at night. Remains tend to be the most unpredictable after sunset. Our Phoenix Society had ventured into remains twice, so our information is completely trustworthy. Previously, it became much more dangerous when it got dark, Evan Walsh said. Phoenix Society seemed to have become his catchphrase. In fact, Lu Xu had little interest in the white man, but his sword was particularly attractive. More importantly, how much volume could it add to his divine water? Meng Jingchan glanced over at Lu Xu, will it really become more dangerous at night? Lu Xu replied with a smile, absolutely, since he said so. It was a cleverly disguised response to Meng Jingchan's probe. In fact, Lu Xu was well aware that the girl had probably suspected him of a few things. But their connection was not strong enough to convince Lu Xu to risk his life in saving her one day. Contrary to Lu Xu's expectations, there was no outburst of gargoyles in the darkness. All of a sudden, a howling pierced the air from no specific direction, inducing an acute pain in people's chests. Strange. Chapter 402, Engulf the Gargoyles. It was an unforeseen plot twist. Fighters found themselves in a situation where they were unable to counterattack. Everyone present was mired in agony. In an attempt to alleviate the excruciating pain, Evan Walsh immediately made full use of all his strength, whereas Meng Jingchan utilized her elemental force, but it was to no avail. The low-level practitioners were already vomiting blood. The howl was so powerful that it had injured their organs. No one had expected such an indiscriminate, incessant attack at the Ko Chang remains. At the current moment, Evan Walsh had swallowed all his pride. He had a clear understanding of his own status and he knew that the same fate would await him had his constitution been slightly poorer, however, neither could he survive the night. Even if he could, what about the day after? Smothering his pain, he glanced around but only to see another person still safe and sound. It was the Chinese teenager named Lu Mu. Why are you still fine? Evan Walsh asked, his face twisted in pain. Lu Xu looked at him, confused, huh? I'm asking you why you are still okay. Evan repeated, then realized that fellow could not understand English. Then, Lu Xu plucked out his earplugs and turned to Meng Jingchan, what did he say? I didn't hear. His action shocked everyone present. Was it not a simple and straightforward solution? From Evan Walsh's distress, plus 666. From Meng Jingchan's distress, plus 199. From Seeing the surge of distress points, Lu Xu put his earplugs back in, satisfied, while the others were busy tearing up their clothes for makeshift earplugs. When they were dumped into a world full of supernatural ideas like magic, cultivation and odd howling, people were inclined to overlook common sense. It was just like the safest spot to sleep in class was the first row as teachers tended to neglect that area when they projected their eyes outwards from the podium. But. Why did you not tell us earlier? Besides, this method was so tacky and lacked class. That reminded them of Lu Xu's story-telling session earlier on the beach. His logic was always so elementary that no one was ever impressed by it. But it was exactly his unsophisticated mind that came up with this genius idea. Meng Jingchan was wondering, had he reached the level of seeing through the nature of all matters? Because she secretly thought Lu Xu was an expert, she had imagined a million images of Lu Xu in her head. While in reality, he only wanted to gain some distress points. To him, what was the use of benefits if you did not go get them? The group circled around in front of the flickering alcohol-fueled stove without a word, as they could not hear one another anyway. The two girls had forged a sense of dependence with the two Class D metahumans. At the current moment, they openly leaned against each other. 
sometimes, it was hard to tell whether it was love that stemmed from moments of hardships. One of the girls suddenly whipped out her phone. She typed on her keyboard and showed the other person her screen as a means of communication. Despite having no signal coverage, other functions still worked. Smart girl. But why did you not use your brains earlier? Oh yes, of course, it was because of love. Sensing no further changes, Lu Xu left the team without any more worries. Although curious, Meng Jingchan did not have the courage to follow him into the darkness. Even she had an innate fear towards the unknown. Suddenly, a thought came across Lu Xu's mind. As he had observed earlier, gargoyles were made of stone, but their claws appeared metallic. Strangely, they looked like forged products. Then, could it be possible that gargoyles themselves were magical weapons in nature? He had to test it out. However, no single gargoyle emerged from the stones after Lu Xu had been trekking a new route for a long time. Weird. Where did they go? Could they be daytime creatures that needed to replenish their sleep at night? Lu Xu almost believed his own false theory. He knocked on a sizable stone, hello? Anybody home? Just when he finished knocking, a crevice slowly cracked open in the stone, but at a much slower rate than before. Lu Xu was stunned. What the heck, there you are. He found it weirdly hilarious. Peeking through the slit, the gargoyle was staring back at him unemotionally without any further action. What's this? To his surprise, Lu Xu witnessed the gradual transmission of dark blue energy from the stone to the gargoyle. The rocks turned out to be the charger for their daily activities. It was a wild guess, though, given the strange happenings in the remains. Before the gargoyle broke free, Lu Xu poured in his divine water proactively. In the next second, the gargoyle was completely surrounded by the golden glow. Lu Xu held his breath in astonishment, is it really corroding it? In his gaze, the gargoyle's body was rapidly corroded away. Upon its complete disappearance, a wisp of black smoke suddenly came into existence within the golden radiance and barged about as if unwilling to be swallowed. But it could not outrun the powerful control of the water. Slowly but steadily, the digestion of the smoke had increased the volume of the water too. This time, it took the divine water a whole half an hour to absorb the seemingly tough smoke. Besides, it appeared that it was the smoke, not the gargoyle itself that resulted in an increase in the water volume. Lu Xu did a rough estimate, which concluded that the energy provided by one gargoyle was almost equivalent to that by a broken magical weapon. What did that mean? Lu Xu eyed the stones in the darkness. One hour for two gargoyles, meaning he could get an amount of energy equal to 20 plus pieces of broken weapons. Despite the low productivity, what was most important was that it was free. Chapter 403, Lu Xu, the Weirdo Evan Walsh rested his head comfortably on Emily's thighs. He shot a glance over at Meng Jingchan before he closed his eyes. Meng Jingchan's masculinity was mostly reflected on her rough skin. Had her skin been smoother and fairer, she might have been a beauty, Evan speculated. Besides, she had a special aura around her, thanks to the years she had spent on keeping her footing in society alone. Even after the regeneration of Spirit Chi, she had chosen a more ambitious path instead of being someone else's minion. Evan had noticed that Meng Jingchan seemed close only to the boy called Lu Mu. But he did not give it a second thought as it was completely normal for the only two Chinese people in the team to have a natural sense of familiarity with each other. But he was wondering, could the girl possibly be interested in seeking some help from himself? Speaking of which, where was Lu Mu? Locking his brows, Evan looked around but could not see him anywhere. Could he be in danger? But soon, Evan decided to ignore the thought and prepare to sleep. Neither did he feel ashamed nor was he concerned about Emily's true feelings when the girl volunteered to be his pillow. Even if Lu Mu had gone missing, Evan would not give a damn about his safety. The temporary campsite was shrouded in silence. With everyone's ears plugged, communication could only be achieved via typing on the screen. 
After a long moment of hesitation, Mang Jingchan finally decided to venture into the darkness in search of Lu Xu. A tall woman of 175 centimeters in height, Mang Jingchan's slender legs were long and beautiful. Men would have thrown themselves at her if she had paid more attention to her skin care. But that was not what she wanted. She believed that things acquired not through her own abilities would not belong to her for eternity. Her dream was to be the founder of an internationally recognized association, the prospects of which must have been awesome. Now, her encounter with Lu Xu, whom she thought to be an expert, had offered her a brand new opportunity. Would it not be of great help to her if she could convince Lu Xu and her sister to join her group? Currently, the presence of a Class C would work like a magnet and attract countless individual practitioners into the fraternities. And Mang Jingchan suspected Lu Xu to be a Class C, perhaps. Even Lu Xu himself was not aware that his capabilities were beyond the reach of many unassociated practitioners. In order to express her sincerity, Mang Jingchan was determined to look for Lu Xu in such treacherous conditions. He could not have gone far, since his backpack was still at the campsite. Clouds were rolling over the sky, trying to smother the scarlet moonlight behind. The blood-red moon drew Mang Jingchan's gaze upwards. She had heard that all remains had red moons, but why were they the same, given that each remain was an individually existing world? With a ball of dim fire on her palm to help with her vision, she followed the direction in which Lu Xu had left. Mang Jingchan was a Class D fire-type metahuman. What happened, suddenly, a split rock caught her attention. Just as she sent her fire closer for illumination, she was startled by the emptiness inside. Where did the gargoyle go? Apparently, the slit was too narrow for a gargoyle to exit. On their way here earlier, all gargoyles in the rocks had been killed. Although Meng Jingchan had no idea how Lu Xu managed to do that, she knew for sure there were crumbles in the slit after the death of gargoyles. But now, there was nothing. Was Lu Xu behind this? What capabilities on earth did he have? As she continued walking, she suddenly heard Lu Xu's voice ahead, Hello? Anybody home? Meng Jingchan was speechless. So was the gargoyle. At that instant, it sounded as if they were back on earth. In the next second, she heard Lu Xu knocking on the stone. Then, a series of cracking sounds came from the distance. Meng Jingchan was familiar with the ominous noise, a stone had snapped open. Meng Jingchan was dumbstruck. Lu Xu was actually looking for gargoyles. He must know of better things to do if he had a sound mind. Meng Jingchan had a first-hand experience of how tough it was to confront the gargoyles even during the day. At that time, her fire-type attacking techniques could barely scratch the monster's skin. She had to concentrate the flames into explosives so as to exert a certain degree of harm. Honestly speaking, Meng Jingchan was scared of gargoyles too and so was Evan. After all, he only dared to clear them one by one. Furthermore, no one was willing to advance if they were not in a large group. But for Lu Xu, not only did he take the initiative of finding gargoyles himself, he was unbelievably casual. Indeed, it was as though he was paying a visit to his neighbors. Having distinguished her flame, Meng Jingchan sneaked towards the source of the sound. From behind a rock, she saw Lu Xu pour a pool of golden liquid into the rock, but the gargoyle inside was unable to even release a scream. Could it be the empty stone just now had actually been occupied as well, but its owner was later evaporated by that golden liquid? What on earth was that? However, one thing was sure, Lu Xu was a water-type expert, and he had in his possession legendary items that only true pros deserved. If he could join her team, it would certainly be smooth sailing for her. Let alone the promising prospects after his ascension to Class B. Of course, she knew it would be too difficult to persuade an expert like him. Would she become another Emily? No, that would be too shameful. In the meantime, Lu Xu had once again completed the corrosion of the gargoyle, left with a wisp of smoke being slowly digested by the divine water. No matter how sneaky Meng Jingchan was, her distress points would always give her away. 
To locate her, Lu Xu sent a drop of water into the air that permeated into the atmosphere as water vapor, which then provided him with an all-round view of the surroundings. Following the same vein, Lu Xiaoyu was able to detect the environment using dust particles in the air. But he did not take any action. On one hand, he felt that an explanation would be unnecessary. On the other, he did not intend to get too caught up with the girl. So what if she saw it? The divine water was only a masquerade for his real secret. Chapter 404, Got Rich Overnight Lu Xu was overjoyed. One gargoyle was equivalent to a piece of broken weapon, which was equal to three magical stones at the Golden Foundation. A whopping $360,000. This simple calculation led to a conclusion, he could earn $720,000 per hour. This was tested and proven. $720,000 per hour, which translated to over $5 million for a night of 8 hours. He was not a remain explorer. He was becoming a rich man overnight. Although the divine water could not be exchanged into cash at the moment, he firmly believed that it would repay him one day for his painstaking efforts in nurturing it. He felt sorry for the wasted though. Only if the rate of engulfment could be up to one gargoyle per minute, he was positive that all gargoyles in the remain could be cleared in due time. Meng Jingchan spent a total of two hours watching him clearing the gargoyles. Despite not knowing his intentions at first, she soon discovered that the divine water was expanding in size. She was shocked. It was a growing mythical object. Based on her experience after the regeneration of Spirit Qi, it was already a difficult task for an individual practitioner to secure a competent magical weapon, not to mention articles like that of Lu Xu's. A deep sense of admiration filled her heart, but not a tinge of jealousy. In addition to her ambitions, she was a morally upright individual. After realizing that it was only a simple, pipeline operation, Meng Jingchan returned to the campsite. The mythical creature that they were frightened of looked like a small fry in front of Lu Xu. Lu Xu did not go back to the camp until sunrise. He did not get carried away because there were better and more awesome prophets awaiting his discovery. Besides, the gargoyles here would not flee. If he did not manage to find anything satisfactory, he could return to the periphery and have a heart-to-heart -heart chat with the gargoyles. In fact, the problem was his giant friends in the area that had already been eaten up by his divine water. Moreover, he needed the protection offered by Evan's team, just in case they ran into real plights. The boundary between day and night seemed to be blurred here, as the sunlight was equally feeble. No one asked Lu Xu where he had been all night, because no one cared. In their perception, he could not have gone far. If not, he would certainly have been dead had he triggered a gargoyle. Until then, only Lu Xu and Meng Jingchan knew that gargoyles would rest at night. At this moment, a bunch of people were running for their lives ahead, with blood stains on their bodies. Chasing them were a dozen of gargoyles, their faces ferocious. Together, the span of their wings could blot out the sky. Evan shouted in alarm, warning. Don't run towards us. His brain was throbbing in fear, as it was their first time to face so many gargoyles at the same time. Thus, he instinctively tried to avoid the confrontation. How could he help others when he could not even ensure his own safety? Help, a girl shouted at the top of her lungs from the front line. Her heavenly features were irresistibly attractive. Coupled with her blood-tainted face and her shattered clothings, men could almost feel the compulsion to protect her. Evan could see her sapphire eyes even from the distance, and the tears rolling down her lovely cheeks. He hesitated, should he save her? In movies, there was an often-used plot whereby a hero risked their life to save the damsel in distress. It often made the audience bewildered, what good did it do for the hero? In fact, such questions stemmed from the overestimation of men's resistance against attractive females. Countless men had fought and died for women they fell for. To Evan, the possibilities after saving the girl was far more important than the process of rescuing itself. Before he could think it through, a shadow swooshed past, I'm coming to save you. 
Was that not the slacker Lumu? Why? Why he suddenly excited by the beauty? From Evan Walsh's distress, plus 422. From Meng Jingchan. Meng Jingchan was shocked too. It turned out that Lu Mu was just another boy who would give in to Femme Fatale. His proaction caught the other team by surprise. They saw a glint of hope. But before they could react, Lu Shu dashed through the crowd towards the gargoyles head on. Such an idiot. Do he wanna die? Oh my god, he's gonna get attacked by 10 plus gargoyles at the same time. He's dead. No one saw it coming. Biting her lips, the pretty girl looked back, stunned by the stranger's selfless decision to buy her team more time. Judging from the boy's teammate's reaction, it seemed unlikely that he would ever survive the siege. Just when he was about to be surrounded, Lu Xu evaded most gargoyles at indescribable speeds and caught one by its leg amidst the chaos. Losing its balance, the gargoyle was dragged along by Lu Xu away from the horde, its right wing flapping backwards in the strong winds. In order to prevent it from struggling, Lu Xu even hurled it back and forth like a broken kite. Before the two groups could meet, Lu Xu had already run far away with the gargoyle in his grip. He even darted past Evan's line of defense, disregarding other people's unbelievable stares. This one is on me. I'll leave the rest to you all, then, he disappeared from their view. Everyone was dumbstruck. Lu Xu's entire performance took less than half a minute. Evan. Meng Jingchan. Gargoyles. Chapter 405 The Ridiculous World. Facing the direction which Lu Xu had disappeared into, everyone was both shocked and confused. It did not make any sense why a timid slacker would suddenly transform into such a fearless warrior. But his speed was not too fast as to arouse any suspicion about his Class E strength type abilities. At the very least, Evan felt that he could have been even faster. However, his movement earlier was just awesome. He had managed to evade the gargoyle's attack, capture an enemy with impressive accuracy, and then retreat unharmed. The fleeing foreign beauty was pleasantly surprised by Lu Xu's action, which soon spun the situation out of control like an unbridled wild horse. The twist caught everyone off guard. No one knew where Lu Xu was nor his plan, only Meng Jingchan was positive that he must be hiding somewhere and using his magical golden liquid to consume the gargoyle. She also knew that he would probably make his appearance again after around half an hour. The truth was Lu Xu was not a hero at all, he was simply interested in the gargoyle itself. In fact, he had cleared all gargoyles in the region in 10 hours last night. Currently, he was genuinely cheerful for the visible expansion of his divine water. In the meantime, everyone else took it as Lu Xu being engaged in a life-and-death struggle with the monster. After he had given a head start, other members of the group were passively forced to contribute as well. Strict conformity was often unreasonable. Clenching his teeth, Evan flashed his sword and charged to the front. Despite his urge to make a proper self-introduction to the pretty lady, that he was from the Phoenix Society of North America, there was no time for this. Following behind, other metahumans were already showing their best prowess. A giant flame suddenly started burning on Mang Jingchan's palm, which immediately began to continuously shrink. When it was condensed into a fiery bead of extremely high temperature and pressure, Meng Jingchan hurled it towards the gargoyles, and the bead instantly exploded with incredible power. In the blink of an eye, the gargoyles' formation was breached. Seizing the opportunity, Evan slashed hard at the chest of a plunging gargoyle, and the outburst of his immense strength immediately disemboweled the monster. However, a gargoyle's only weakness was its heart. Sadly, Evan had missed it. Seeing that the number of helpers was double that of the gargoyles, those fleeing for their lives soon joined the fight. Though soulless, the gargoyles' teamwork was seamless. After a few failed attempts, to everyone's surprise, the monsters changed their attacking techniques and started hovering in the sky, awaiting their chances. Every now and then, a few gargoyles would suddenly plummet to assault the weaker individuals all while avoiding Evan with their best abilities. 
Meanwhile, Evan was diverted by three gargoyles above him, unable to provide any support for his team members. The gargoyles were grinning from ear to ear in sinister mockery, and even Evan was forced into a passive situation. At the moment, the two parties came to a standstill. In spite of the clear advantage in numbers, the humans were powerless in the face of the gargoyles' aggressive approach in the sky. Besides, they could hardly be harmed by the metahumans' attacks. As time slowly tickled by, anxiety grew in Evans' and other people's hearts. They now regretted their impulsive decision to risk their own safety for strangers' lives. The gargoyles appeared to have unlimited energy. On the bright side, there were no more gargoyles being triggered, though only Meng Jingchan knew the reason was because Lu Xu had cleared the area. Just when everybody was desperate about breaking through the predicament, Lu Xu suddenly returned to the battlefield. He was seen dashing back to the site from behind a random rock, and the gargoyles immediately ceased their attack at the sight of the new face. Nonetheless, in the next instant, Lu Xu leaped up towards a gargoyle. Despite its best effort at avoiding Lu Xu by climbing higher, it was too late. In a split second, Lu Xu had already caught its lower leg, dragging it down. It was way too quick. He took less than 10 seconds from running back, to capturing a gargoyle. Stunned, a person commented, why does he appear to be more and more experienced? The gargoyles looked shocked too, as though they were never created to deal with such situations. Then, Lu Xu disappeared again, swinging the gargoyle in his grip. Evan. Gargoyles. From Evan Walsh's distress, plus 299. Apparently, it was an atrocious battle during which casualties were possible anytime, but there was a tinge of ridiculousness and surreality in the air. There must be something wrong with this world. The girl who was saved was always concerned about Lu Xu throughout the entire duration of the fight. After Lu Xu hauled the gargoyle away, neither the former nor the latter returned. So, did he win or lose? Just when she was wondering, Lu Xu came back and put up the exact same show again. But this time she was less worried, at least she was assured that the boy could defeat the monster by himself. As for why he chose to run, maybe he did not want to be surrounded by a horde of gargoyles, the girl tried to explain Lu Xu's inexplicable behaviors. As a result, people were fighting hard against the gargoyles while thinking about Lu Xu. At the moment, they no longer looked down upon the class E Lu Xu. His impressive skills ranked him as one of the top in the group, but of course, below Evan. He could not shake Evan's all-powerful image in the team. After all, no one witnessed how on earth Lu Xu managed to exterminate the gargoyles, so his capabilities remained unknown. On the other hand, Evan's every sword movement was seen and admired. Meanwhile, one fewer gargoyle meant less pressure and more probable counterattacks. Another half an hour had passed. Like a deal, Lu Xu appeared again and lugged away another gargoyle. Evan shouted loudly behind his back, Stay. We can definitely win with you here. In other words, instead of weakening Team Gargoyle's total power one by one, it was time for a complete reverse. But before he could finish his sentence, Lu Xu was gone for the third time. What the? What does it mean to be happy? Cause it looks like we all don't know Glass half full or empty Man, we just put them on the show Try to look to the heavens To tell us things that we've been